Good morning. I'm very glad to be here. <coughs> it's a great opportunity to have discourse amongst people who come from different places and perhaps with different points of view. And uh, I think that's very important because um, the, the one thing is quite clear, that we are in a complex situation. And I, the only thing I know and I understand about complexity, there's a lot of books about it, there's one thing. When there's complexity, there's no clear answer. And I think I'm not saying it in order to get out of it, but in order to allow us to bear the fact that we, cannot, we don't have a clear answer, that we have to live with it. And I'm glad to quote something else, that as you have heard, maybe before I come here, that learning is in the paradox. And if you don't discern the paradox between the three presentations now, then just try again, because it's paradoxical, but relevant. And I think there's a certain, there's a method in the madness if you want to see it even, because we had one way, a second way, and a third way, and mine will be a little wider. I have a hard time to, to, to shift from re, after reading Professor Munro's paper, which is an extremely interesting paper. I hope you've got it. And the name of the paper is Balanced Rules and Professional Discretion. Quite a difficult task to balance rules and professional discretion. That's very complex, and I think that is as it is. And I think that the, the, the difficulty is, I really don't think that we have to balance it. But we have to accept that there are multiple sources of knowledge. And not knowledge per se, but only one kind of knowledge. Only knowledge for action. I think that this is very important to point out. Not which explains, but knowledge for action. That is one of the things I've learned from somebody who, whenever I talk, I can must, must mention him, this is Donald Schoen, with whom I had the privilege of working here. So I want to say something about the context where this can take place. <clears throat> it needs a setting which provides opportunities for learning, we may say, um, for, for learning about um, uh, um, provision of, of, of modes of work for use, again, not for, to explain. And that means knowledge from the outside and knowledge from the inside. Inside, S-I-G-H-T, but inside, S-I-D-E, both, also. And both are important. So what we know is that there are multiple actors in these situations. And we have to take the knowledge of the multiple actors from the inside and from the outside. And Therefore, I want to point out one thing which I think is very important. You know, I, I want to say, you know what's the origin of the word clinical? Clinical, I'm sorry that I can teach you Latin, that's the only thing I can teach you in Latin, means a bed. B-E-D, mita. It's not by chance. And we have to think that we are beyond that. We are in a different world. What, one of the things which are very difficult to give legitimacy to, but which I think is the heart of the matter, is that we have to look and search for what is called tacit knowledge. Tacit knowledge is something which exists. I just wrote recently a paper which has a very good uh, title. The, the paper you judge yourself. And the, the title of the paper is what probation officers don't know that they know. That is tacit knowledge. They do things well, and they don't know how they do it. And this is what seems to me of such great importance. And I don't mean just tacit knowledge by per se, but tacit knowledge which is related to action, to how you do it. And for, for each of these situations, there are multiple answers, but, um, um, because there are different sources of knowledge. So there are multiple answers. We have to live with that there are being multiple answers. And so the actors have to struggle with the fact that there are multiple answers. And it's an ongoing struggle for a solution. It's not, there's no one clear solution. Every time, all the way, you have to struggle for solutions. Um, and I think it is very important to realize, one thing which I find a little missing, that, you know, those, the actors are not only consumers of knowledge, they are producers of knowledge. They have knowledge which has to be produced. We have to find it. 
And I'll say something about whom I mean by actors. And, and you see, and not just knowledge which is available, but knowledge which works. The whole time we have to think what works. Does it make a difference? That is the heart of the matter. Um, and I, I think it's important to remember, and this I miss a little bit, that the providers are knowledge, of knowledge are not the researchers just. The providers of knowledge are the actors. And I'll say something about the actors in a minute. And in order to do that, I, as some of you know, and some of you will say, yes, 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 I know what he's going to talk about. Yes, you're correct. I'm going to learn from success. That's what I'm going to talk. If you think you've heard it all, okay, a little bit. But you see, there is a tendency to say, yes, 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 he's talking or learning from success. I think, test yourself, examine yourself, whether this Muvan may love you. It's obvious. Yes, 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 that's what you're going. Is it not maybe a way of not to do so, not to go into what it meant by learning from success? I mean, you you can you can make your choices. I have made my choices. You know, not the only thing. I've done something beyond learning from success. But I think it is a great opportunity, and I want to introduce that, and that will be my main point. Learning from success, by the way, is what's called positive deviance. I like this idea very much because I. I, that's one of the things I, I can use from statistics. Yes, I don't use statistics the whole day. You know, positive <laughs> deviance, negative deviance, positive deviance. How come that worked? That's very interesting. It worked. Yes, it worked. So why, how come it worked? The exceptional. We do a lot of things in our work, in our life where we look at what's exceptional and not what is usual and not what's oh that's all wrong. No, what is exceptional. The exceptional is very important. It's an, a, a source of learning and of knowledge, which is very important, which you do we use every day. I mean, we, we, you know, some, sometimes you know, we, we make quite important decisions because we find somebody who's exceptional. And this is not the worst thing which one say about one. We're looking at the exceptional. So, uh, so we, the, the issue about learning from success is how to generate action-oriented tested knowledge. It means there is knowledge, we know how to do it, we don't know how to do it, and we have to transform from the tacit to the, to the explicated, and then we can use it, and then it, it will serve us. Um, and this really gets us to, um, um, to, to the, one of the main points, how can we engage in ongoing collective learning? Not individual learning, but co learning of, uh, uh, of, uh, of a, a co collegial system. Kuti has referred to that. Not my, my individual knowledge is also important. I'm learning also in own action, but also to share, to do it together as a rule, not as an exception. There's a time for it, there's a place for it, there's a structure for it, because otherwise, if you want to rely only on your personal knowledge, you are lost. We have to, to try and, and, and find, find these op opportunities. So we are interested in engaging in ongoing uh, collegiate systems, in con collegiate learning. It's a very nice expression, collegiate learning, you know, because um, um, I forgot there's, a, there's something, uh, if I remember it, I'll say it. The kind of learning we are talking about is what is called reflective learning. Learning in action and on action. In Hebrew, I, I, the, uh, there's a tendency in Hebrew to translate it into reflection. Reflexia, let me da reflective it. Nonsense. There's a very good English, Hebrew word, which is called bonenut, and I hope we, we can start using it. It's a different kind of learning. When I'm sometimes working with people in schools, I ask them what's the difference, uh, the opposite of learning, instructing. It is a, it, it is a, a process of learning which we are interested in. And we are learning, try to provide opportunities for learning in action and learning on action. That's what we do every day, all the day. We are learning, oh, how, come it, how, how come it works? Ah, yesterday I did this. Why don't we use it? Why don't we explicate it? Why don't we make use of it? Because it's something which I, I, nobody has to invent. It has, be, it has been invented before us and we are inventing it all the time. That's what seems very important. So we have to provide opportunities for, for, for that. Uh, and we have to hope for an attempt to really trying to create ongoing discourse of learning in the organizations which we, in which we are working. 
Uh, you know, I'm heading a unit which is called the Unit of Learning from Success and Ongoing Learning in Human Services. Please learn this by heart. You know, learning from success and ongoing learning from human services. If you think that it's all learning from success, it is not. The heart of the matter, how can we create in the, se in the settings in which we work a, a place where we can feel comfortable of learning, not per per personally. It takes time, it takes a place, it takes responsibility for somebody for, for the learning in, the, in this organization. And as you know, I've been very interested in creating another concept, which I think is, makes to me a lot of sense, and I hope it does to you. <coughs> we don't want to be advisors, no counselors, we want to be learning companions. If we are learning companions, we learn how to learn and can help others to learn how to learn. And if we do that, then, then we have got a chance. So the, the last point I want to make is the following. Of course, there are researchers. There are people in charge of training. There are, act there are different kind of actors. But I want to make the last point is the following. It, what we often miss, that the source of knowledge of what has to be done are the people on whose behalf and with whom we are working. And this is, to my mind, very often left out. For instance, I, yesterday I was in, in a lecture where somebody said, look, I, I first of all have to ask the person what does he want. If I ask him what he wants, then I know what to do. That's not what we do. How we can use the people we are working with, and for, who are actually our partners, with whom, with whom we have to work together. It's not just, I'm, 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 don't, um, I'm not just talk, talking at them, with them. How do we create transactions with the people we are working on an ongoing basis? Because if there are transactions, he can contribute or she can contribute, and I. We're getting into discourse. And therefore, I think that the most important thing in, in, in all, I would say, all the summarizes, I'm glad to, to um, quote to you somebody who can only, I can quote only in one area, which I've learned, which is very important. How can we move from interactions to transactions? Not interactions of learning, but transactions of learning. Transactions where there are multiple stakeholders, multiple partners, who are all partners to trying to, not to explain the world, but to change it. We are change agents, and for changing, we have to have multiple partners. That's all I wanted to tell you. And I think it is not, in some way it may sound, what was as he talk about, you know. In some way it may not be a bad setting for some of the things which has been said here before. And I think that to concentrate on thinking what are the conditions in which ongoing learning in colleges, in, in our kind of agencies, is happening is very important. And you know, the people should come from the outside. The people should come from the inside. The main thing is if it creates the discourse of learning and not of teaching and not of preaching and not of directing. But it really creates an atmosphere. And I think that, uh, that the Haruf is a great opportunity for that. And I thank for giving me the opportunity to share it.